Did you ever have any problems with the belts in either Smoky Mountain or OVW? Uh, yes. Well, not at the time that they occurred or that they were being used, but afterwards. I'd actually... <sighs> When when we folded up Smoky Mountain, Randy Hale still had some life left in the USWA and Smoky Mountain rivalry, right? Where some of the guys like the Heavenly Bodies, Tom Pritchard, and Buddy Landell have been going over there and et cetera. And Randy had asked, well, can I go ahead and still do this deal? with? I don't even know who he was doing the program with, but it involved Tommy Rich and I think maybe Buddy and somebody else over there. Can I use the heavyweight title belt, Smoky Mountain? I said, okay, go ahead. Just let me know when you're done with it, <clears throat> especially because I'm going to move to Connecticut. And some way or another, I can't remember whether I called him, he called me. I was about to either, I was about to move or already had moved. But the point is, I'm talking to him, Randy, where's my belt? Well, I think Tommy's got it. What? Tommy Rich. Well, what the fuck's he got it for? Can you get it back? Well, I don't know. Well, then come to find out from Buddy Landell, who was also involved in this, apparently Tommy took the Smoky Mountain title belt to a car dealership. Remember, I've talked about Classy Motors and the boss, Wayne. Yeah, they were sponsors. Who, yeah, whose real name wasn't Wayne. His name was Terry, but anytime... Anybody asked for Terry on the phone, he would say, he's not there, this is Wayne. And it was a whole thing. But anyway... Now, he's, is he Judge Auto Dealer? No, that was that, that was the judge that worked for him. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. maybe the worst thing in Smoky Mountain history I got to sit there yes. for, which was the promo from Judge Auto Dealer. <laughs> judge Auto Dealer of Classy Motors, where nobody walks away. They push. But anyway... <laughs> So, <laughs> so Tommy takes the belt over there to the car lot in West Knoxville and Buddy's with him. And old Wayne said, because Tommy wasn't the Smoky Mountain champion, you know, the last that he heard, he didn't know what was going on in Memphis. So he said, well, I can't even, because Tommy wanted to sell Wayne the belt. And Wayne said, well, this is what Buddy said. Wayne said, well, I can't buy it from you you're not the real champion so tommy had buddy lean backwards over the hood of a fucking car on the lot and he covered him while still standing up and counted one two three or whatever is it okay now i'm the champion so wayne bought the belt from tommy rich by the time i found all this shit out i was already in connecticut i thought what the you know what fuck it because i was kind of fed up at that point but i wished i'd had the belt but as i'm not going all the way down there and through this and whatever. And son of a gun, wouldn't you know who won the pony? It wasn't. 1996 sounds like it would have been too soon, and 98 sounds too late, so I think it was 1997. I was doing some show, autograph, deal, whatever, for Dennis Corluzzo. I believe it, it's, it was somewhere in the Northeast. And it was around the time of my birthday or close enough for rock and roll that he could call it that. And he came out in front of everybody with a big box and said, I got a present for you. And I opened it up and there was a Smoky Mountain heavyweight championship belt because he had heard what happened and unbeknownst to me, got from one of the boys or, you know, cause he knew all the Memphis guys that he would bring up for his shows, got from one of the boys, the information to how to get a hold of this guy yeah, and went buddy. down and bought the belt back. It had to be buddy. Cause buddy around that period of time. Yeah. I wasn't there the night he gave you the belt, but I was around and a part of a lot of things. And buddy was talking to Dennis all the time. And he was even working for Dennis. Yeah. So, but anyway, so that's what Dennis did to pay me back and thank me for getting him talent, doing some other things and blah, blah, blah. So that's how I regained possession of the Smoky Mountain title belt after. And then T Tommy, in recent years, has tried to say, well, I I called Jimmy and told him I had the belt, but he owed me $1,200. No, because if I owed Tommy Rich $1,200, he's a complete fucking idiot. That means he worked for me for almost a month without getting paid. <laughs> the fuck? If he had a check for the last weekend we work, I bet he got a check for $600 since that was four days that weekend, which was unusual. 
And if he couldn't cash it that week, he could pretty much cash it the week after. And I never got a bounce check off of Tommy. And I never heard from Tommy after we closed up on the phone or ever again until the next time I saw him years and years later. But he just wanted, but he had to tell people that so that he would justify himself in selling the belt to the boss of Judge Otto Dealer. But I got it back in the end. And Tommy, I'm sure, applied that $1,500 or whatever he got or $1,200 to getting his new teeth that he has today. So I'm happy for him. What do you think would have happened? If I mean, in positive or negative, in some way, if Tommy Rich or any of the other guys that had worked for me had called me up and said, hey, I've got your belt and I'm going to sell it to a car dealer unless you give me $1,200. Well, I paid more than that for the belt. There would have either been violent mayhem or I'm sorry and I will fucking certainly pay you this money and bring my belt back. One or the other. But not, nah, go ahead, do what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so that was that. You know, Brian, I'm telling you, these valuable things, valuable things, works of art, works of old masters, master craftsmen, whether it be Reggie Parks that made the belts, or even Nikita Malkovich, or whether it be the, the great painters like the Van Goghs and the Monets. You always say his name Monet, funny. Monet, it's Monet. That's not funny, that's the way you say it. Well, Monet, Monet, Tommy James. And anyway, the masterworks, the artworks, the things of value, the collector's items. You can't get these things anymore. That's why they're collector's items, because there's more people interested in having them than there are of those things to go around. I talked about my Amazing Fantasy 15. And not mine, but the perfect copy of a comic book just sold for $3 million last year or last month, or whatever the fuck it was. $3 million because it's perfect, and there ain't that many, and a lot of people love Spider-Man. How many action comics number ones are there out there today? Enough to go around? I think not. So imagine when you have all these, these painters, these masters from the Renaissance era and the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, the, 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 all the ages. And, and and there's not enough of them to go around. That's what makes them appreciate in value. And little, little peons like you and me, Brian, we can't go and we can't joust with the Rembrandts and, and all of the, uh, the Michelangelos and things like that. But now we can because of the people at Masterworks. We've been talking about this. The art and collectibles market is worth $1.7 trillion. And as we've said, if you corner that market, you've just made $1.7 trillion. Well, you it's can't. Well, uh, we, want to encourage people to, we want to encourage people to use this, but you can't corner that market. We don't want to mislead people in thinking that there's a way to corner the art market. Well, you may not be able to corner it, but you could pin it in and keep it from going where it wants to go for a little while till you get what you want. It's going to increase by another $900 billion in the next five years. And now, like I said, we all can get in on the action. It's a platform called Masterworks that lets the normal folks like you and me that may not have, have been able to just go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and take a shopping cart and say, fill it up. But now we can invest in famous works of art at a fraction of the actual price. So many of you have signed up when we talked about Masterworks before on the podcast also, now they're offering all of you guys out there, the Cult of Cornette, priority access. You can skip the wait list. You will never have to wait for anything again. As a matter of fact, as soon as you go to masterworks.art, that's masterworks.art slash gym, and sign up and skip the wait list, well, then you can just go to the grocery and just barge in front of people. You can go to the movies and just sit in front of anybody you want. You don't well, have no. to wait in lines at the amusement parks. No, no, common courtesy still applies even with the benefits of Masterworks and these wonderful investments. But common courtesy... But you're courtesy's... skipping the wait list. There's no waiting now once you sign up with us at Masterworks because we say so. Well, no, we don't say that. We In life, you may have to wait, but with Masterworks, 
You won't have to wait. You're talking me into a circle. I'm sick. All right, I'm sorry. You're feeling puny. Folks, go to masterworks.art slash gym and skip their wait list. You get priority access. You can find out from that fine website how to go about all these things where you're going to make $1.7 trillion. Although some collector plates do go down in value. And you can see important regulation A disclosures at masterworks.io slash cd. You can see important regulation B disclosures at mytaint.com. But <laughs> don't worry about that right now. <laughs> That's masterworks.art <laughs> slash gym. Why? Why did you do <laughs> you'll get you'll get you'll get lots of masters and some work out of out of masterworks. It's very valuable. And I think they you may be even able to invest in some of these championship belts we were talking about. Because they're works of art. That is interesting. That should be something they look at. Well, yes. You could buy a piece of the belt. I mean, Ric Flair technically sold a lot of people pieces of the NWA belt, didn't he? Well, as a matter of fact, I think they have to manufacture three more belts just to have that many pieces. But you know, <laughs> yeah. So you could you could pitch in. You could and you could you could bring the NWA belt over at Christmas and then give it to it ne its next owner for Valentine's Day, and you could just rotate holidays with that type of thing. With masterworks.